This video is brought to you by Aiming Hobbies and CalRC. Click the links in the description below. After a long race day and all that good stuff, chances are you usually just toss your stuff back into your crate and drive yourself home. Once you get home and look at what your car looks like after a good run and you tell yourself, damn, I really should have used that air compressor. This is what basically what happened to me after I ran my nitro buggy for the first time and brought it home without actually cleaning it or anything like that, leading it to looking like the mess you see before you. Now that I plan to sell this particular buggy and all the nitro accessories I have for it, I figured that now would be a good time to give it a proper clean. Lucky for me, I was contacted by CalRC recently and they sent me a care package of different products that I'll be highlighting some of in this video. What a perfect time to test out their stuff on something that has been sitting for about 4 weeks in total with dirt caked on it. In this video, I'll be showing you how to quickly clean a buggy and protect it for the future. Before we begin however, I'd like to remind you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as well. Also, if you'd like to save on your next order from CalRC, Feel free to use code ROACHRC at checkout. That's ROACHRC, all one word in all caps. Also, if you'd like to win this short course potty towards the end of September, be sure to donate $5 to this PayPal account right here. If you're just listening, that's ROACHRC1 at gmail.com. Every $5 is one entry. With that out of the way, let's begin. First off, before we do anything, we're going to have to partially disassemble the car. Luckily, they make this pretty easy to do for the most part with many nitro buggies made today. All it takes to remove both the fuel tank, the nitro engine, the header, and exhaust are six 2mm hex screws, all of which are pretty easy to get to if you have an angled 2mm hex driver like this. Off they come, and here we are. Now that we have that removed, it would be recommended to also remove the fuel tubing and replace it with either fresh tubing or clean the tubing that you have with nitro cleaner. This time we're not going to worry about it as this car has been run literally once after break-in, but after the car has been sitting for a while, especially for years or more, it might be a good idea. With that out of the way, why don't we remove these shocks as well so we can clean them separately? And what we're going to be using to clean them is this, our best friend for this video, CalRC's chassis cleaner. The idea of this is to provide the cleaning power of something like Simple Green without having the degenerative properties of simple drain on things like plastics and rubber. We'll get to that point later. Before we test it on the chassis though, we're going to use it on the shocks in the wing. For these shocks, we're going to use this ultrasonic cleaner that comes with some of the cleaning packs from CalRC and the chassis and plastic cleaner along with this. This is degreaser from CalRC, and it's best used on nitro engines and shocks where oils are likely build up over time. It's also a good idea when using our main tool in this video, an old toothbrush to spray the bristles with degreaser to fully clean it before and after use, just so you're not smearing oil back into whatever you're cleaning. First off, we're going to fill our ultrasonic bath with about one fifth cleaner and four fifths water, after which we're going to put the shocks in and turn on the little bath and leave them there for about five minutes. While that's going on, we're going to clean this wing. Again, most people would just replace the wing, but since my bank account looks like this, uh, I'd like to save this one which is why we're going to hit it with a hint of degreaser and a whole lot of chassis cleaner with the trusty toothbrush. Now that the wing is clean, let's do the same thing with this fuel tank, although a little bit more carefully as to avoid getting water in there. A hint of degreaser and heavy amounts of chassis cleaner later, and this is what the fuel tank looks like now. After that, let's take a look at our shocks after they've been bathed. Not too bad. Let's brush off the remaining dirt and go ahead and dry them thoroughly. Now ideally I would use an air compressor or a can of compressed air, but for now I'm just going to go through with a microfiber towel and go ahead and dry off the shocks. And even though I didn't show it on screen, I did use a heat gun to speed up the drying process as well. Next up is the chassis itself. 
Now, if you have a decent amount of time to spare, you can completely take apart the car to clean it and rebuild it from the ground up. However, since I already rebuilt the shocks and discs and I'm starting to run a low on different shock and diff fluids, doing so may be an effort in redundancy. However, for now, let's get to scrubbing the entire car. Again, an old toothbrush is usually the best for situations like this, especially when the dirt is sort of caked onto the chassis in this section of the car. But once again, we'll be using the chassis cleaner, along with a hint of degreaser on certain parts where exhaust fumes were being caught. Spray, brush, hand dry, heat gun, lather, rinse, repeat across the entire chassis. Once we get this entire process done, the car will look almost finished. However, in order to protect it for later use and to make it easier to clean in the future after a run, or 10, we need to use this right here. This is CalRC silicone spray. The chassis cleaner made the chassis look better, this will help it make it look the best. Now ideally you'd want to use this on a car that hasn't been run yet in order to keep the plastics looking new for longer, like for example this T6.4. However, I don't have that luxury, so we'll just stick it on to applying it onto a clean buggy. The way it works is simple. You spray it onto the individual parts you want to protect like the arms and such and wait for it to cure. Now the hotter it is and the more direct sunlight comes into contact with the parts after they've been sprayed, the faster they'll be able to cure. However, for maximum protection, I would recommend letting this sit for about 12 hours max, basically overnight. You'll know it has cured when the car looks wet but is actually dry. Kind of like this. Looks much better, doesn't it? To be honest, I was a bit skeptical about how good the stuff I used in this video could actually be. But after being able to use them and seeing the results on this buggy, I'd say the stuff I use in this video, the chassis cleaner, the silicon spray, degreaser, and even pit mat are all worth looking into. So if you'd like to do so, be sure to use code ROACHRC at checkout on CalRC's website which I have linked below. Also, as of the uploading this video, this particular buggy that has been featured will be on sale, including all the nitro accessories I've happened to acquire like extra fuel tubing, glow igniter, air filters, aka wheels and tires, a starter box, and a few other things. Either check the link in the description below or feel free to DM me on Facebook if you're interested. Also, if you'd like to support me another way, feel free to subscribe to my Patreon where I post updates and teasers as to when my future videos are going to come out. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my active patrons Michael Williams, RC World Discord server, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Joe Jenkins, Rob Bettingfield, Caden Merckx, Ian Petrie, Keith McDonald, Spiro Harvey, Logan Jutkins, and especially Morrison Watt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.